Welcome back campers. So let's go ahead and start section 3.3. We're gonna be looking at the product and quotient rules and higher order derivatives. Uh, so we're gonna look at these two rules first and then at the end we'll talk about higher order derivatives. Sounds kind of scary, doesn't it? Um, it's actually not that bad. It sounds worse than it really is. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with these. So find the derivative of each function, okay. So first one, oh, I can just use the power rule. So that would just be 2x. Okay, second one, um, oh, let's go ahead and multiply that out first. Because the power rule doesn't say anything when you have some sort of a product in there. So we gotta distribute, get it to the right format, and then we can use the power rule uh, from there. So that would be 8x to the third minus um, 9x squared. Okay, part C. Um, hmm. Well, this one, I can't use the power rule yet either. I'd have to multiply all this stuff out, and then I could. But that one, that seems like it's a lot of extra time that I don't really want to do. Like I can foil that, it's just a little bit tedious. Um, so let's go ahead and leave that one alone. Um, like I don't really want to expand all that out. I can, but I just don't want to. Okay, so there has to be a more efficient way than doing this. Um, and that's where the product rule is going to come into play because it's going to tell us how to find the derivative of an actual product. So this one we could actually find the derivative if we multiplied it out, where there's some functions where that can't happen. So like y equals x sine of x, you can't do anything with this. So you can't expand it. Uh, you, there's nothing to multiply. So how do you take the derivative of this guy? So let's kind of play around with it and see um, what we can do. Um, so we're gonna let y equal f of x times g of x. So does the derivative equal just f prime times g prime? So in other words, like with x sine of x, can I take the derivative of x and multiply it by the derivative of sine? So let's just, for fun, let's just say yes I can. So let's see if I'm right. So let f of x equal 2x and g of x equal 3x. So the derivative of both of them f would be 2 and g would be 3. So then if I multiply them together, I get 6. Okay, so now let y equal the product of f and g. So if I multiply them together as they are, that would equal 6x squared. Okay, so then the derivative of y would be 12x. So did you, or did I get the same answers before? So I got six and I got 12x. That's a big old no. So if y equals f times g, does y prime equal f prime times g prime? Well, no. If it was yes, then I should have gotten the same result both times, and I didn't. So whenever you have two functions being multiplied together, uh, either like this or like x sine x, you can't just do the derivatives of both, multiply them out and call it, a, call it a day. So fortunately for us, some pretty smart people figured out what to do with it. Um, so that's why they have a product rule. So there's a rule to follow when you have a product. All right, so let f and g be differentiable functions. So you got a product of some functions together. So the product rule is gonna go as follows. It's the derivative of f for the derivative of the first times g and then plus, now it's gonna flip flop. It's gonna be the derivative of g or the second piece times the first. 
and that's how they're all gonna go. All right, so let's try that function out from earlier, x sine of x. So find the derivative of that. Okay, so I gotta use my rule. So the first one, the x, that's the f. The sine of x, that's gonna be the g. And you can do this if you want. You can kind of underline and kind of highlight, you know, what's what um, until you start getting used to it. Uh, and then it'll just be uh, just kind of going off of rote memory. Okay, so let's follow the formula just straight out and see what happens. So I want the derivative of f. So I want the derivative of x, which is 1, times the second function, or the g, so times sine, plus... Now it flip-flops. So I want the derivative of g, so cosine of x times f. Well, f was x. So the only thing left to do here is just to lead it up. So like 1 times sine is just sine. And then here you have cosine of x times x. So just so we don't get confused on like, are these two x's being multiplied together? Uh, and they're not because it's x times the entire thing. We're just gonna put that single x in front. So x cosine of x. And that would be your derivative. So typically when you use the product rule, your derivative comes out larger uh, or has more terms in it than the original function. Okay, so let's go ahead and try it again with uh, this guy. g of t equals t squared times the e of t. So we'll let the t squared be the f, and the e of t, e to the t, be the g. So g prime is going to equal, so now let's just follow the rule again. So the derivative of f, or the first part, would be 2t times the back function, so e to the t. And now it flips again. So do the derivative of g. Well, that one's a fun one. That's just e to the t times that front function which is t squared. All right, so let's kind of clean it up a little bit. We'll write that as just t squared uh, e to the t. Now with this one, I mean, you could factor it if you wanted to. It did not tell you to. Um, it wouldn't simplify anymore if you did, so you can leave it alone. Uh, in the homework, I think the back of the book pretty much likes to factor these. Uh, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can. It's not wrong if you do. Um, so just be aware that you know the book's going to do that. So don't panic and be like, oh my gosh, I don't have the right answer. It's like, yes, you do. Uh, you could either factor in your head or foil the book's answer out and see if you come out with the same results. If you do, you're good to go. Uh, if you don't... Either you foiled something wrong or your derivative is off. Um, okay, so we're going to stop the video here and we'll continue on uh, in the next video with the quotient rule.